Hello, everyone. Welcome to No Summary's Golden Threads, Golden Threads Online Conversations with Artists Who Don't Fit in a Box. For those of you who don't know, Golden Thread is the first theater company in the U.S. devoted to the Middle East, founded by playwright and director Taran Jigazarian in 1996. Golden Thread Productions acknowledges that the land we occupy is the home of the Ramatouche Olanone, Olanone people known as colonially today as San Francisco. As we recognize the ancestral stewards of the land and acknowledge that our presence here is a reminder of the dark history of colonization and dispossession, we are outraged by the US administration's complicity in perpetuating the same cycle of oppression, land theft and genocide in Palestine. Golden Thread Productions is dedicating its entire season to Palestine because we believe it's our duty as artists and culture makers to speak out against injustices and stand with the oppressed. This season is our response to the systemic and continuous erasure of the Palestinian people and to the silencing of their stories, culture, and their history. We do this not only for Palestinians, but for our collective humanity. No Summary this year is in line with Golden Thread season for Palestine. It embarks on a tour of four Palestinian cities to offer audiences in the US and beyond a taste of Palestinian theater scene, the, the Palestinian theater scene today. Each episode will spotlight a different theater, showcase its history, notable performances, challenges, and life beyond the scenes through interviews and artists and community members. I'm Dr. Ash Marinaccio, she, her, her pronouns, and I'm coming to you from part of the Lenape Hoking known as New York City. I'm a theater maker and multidisciplinary documentarian, and I'm the lead facilitator of USA Friends of Ashtar which is a group of US-based artists, scholars, activists who support Ashtar Theater's work. We're honored today to be joined by Iman Awun, founder and executive director, and Emil Saba, artistic director of Ashtar Theater in Ramallah, Palestine. I'm gonna read both of their bios and we're gonna begin our conversation. Iman Aoun is co-founder and executive director of Ashtar Theater and an award-winning actress who works in TV, theater, and film. She started her acting career with Al Hakawadi Theater Company in Jerusalem in 1984 and co-founded Ashtar Theater in 1991. In 2020, she was a finalist for the Gilder Cogni Award in New York City. She runs Ashtar International Youth Theater Festival and has written and published several articles on the subject of theater in Palestine and has co-written two books on theater training. And Emil Saba, is Ashtar's artistic director. He's a Palestinian theater maker and actor. Uh, Saba joined Ashtar Theater in 2001 as a theater student graduating later, graduating later with a diploma in theater and working as an actor and trainer until 2014, where Saba graduated with an MFA in acting from the University of Connecticut. Returning back to Palestine, he pursued a career in stage directing, acting, teaching acting, casting, uh, and acting for TV and film. Before we dive into our conversation, I'd like to take a moment to welcome all the folks who are joining us in the Zoom room and also those who are tuning in on the live stream and how around. Those here with us, please feel free to utilize the chat function and post your comments and questions throughout the conversation. And I will be able to, um, to uh, share them with our guests. So we're gonna get started with our conversation and I'm going to start off, start off just with a question for both of you. I think it's on everybody's minds. Um, what's the current situation uh, in the West Bank for theater? I know I see the settler violence. Um, we see the violence every day. Not only that's uh, obviously that's going on in Gaza, but also what's happening in the West Bank, which often isn't as discussed, um, at least in the U.S. media. So. Um, Yes, I'm wondering how is your work being affected? What is your, you know, what's your daily work like? And then um, how can we work in solidarity with you as US artists? Okay, first of all, hello. Um, hello, Ashley. Um, and uh, hello, everybody that is uh, part of uh, this wonderful gathering. And thank you, Golden Thread for um, such a wonderful opportunity really to uh, to give us this platform to talk to uh, our friends in the US um, and the world. Um, 
well uh, uh, of course um i'm not in ramallah at the moment i'm in paris uh, touring with oranges and stones uh, but and I left uh, the country two two weeks ago because we're touring. But I know that uh, uh, this situation uh, that Emil could really talk more about it uh, at the uh, the current situation uh, because every day there is something new. Every day there there is um, like uh, um, a new um, attack, a major assault on uh, on one of the uh, cities or the uh, or the refugee camps or the villages and, uh, and especially what is go going on in Jenin and especially in the northern part um, but everywhere as well so um, I mean one thing that is very important that we have to start our talk um, from from that point onward is the fact that what is happening today is just um a, uh, like a macro of the micro that was happening every every time and every year and every month during uh, uh, 75 years so uh, even when people think that uh, there was peace be between brackets there were never really a real um like attempt to uh, to peace so uh, we've been uh, either um subjected to um, to arrest or to uh, checkpoints or to uh, a separation wall or uh, or to abduction as well and uh, name it so things now are just going a little bit more um how do you say um more uh more big Fast -paced. More, like yeah faster. more faster as as well yes i mean if you want to add for on that. Yeah, hello, Ash, and everyone. Uh, thank you for um, having us. It's really an honor. And um, it's, it's as Iman is saying, it's been going for years. Like, it is a reality that uh, we keep fighting every day. Uh, some, some periods comes that we uh, forget about it, and, and uh, we kind of live with this um, delusion that um, occupation um, is there, but uh, we try not to see it sometimes. Uh, but recently, of course, uh, with what's happening with Gaza, everything has been uh, highlighted uh, more. And um, I don't feel that anyone feels safe at all. Not us, not our families, not our students. Like not anyone we i interact with or talk to a friend or, or, or uh, any person is feeling safe everyone is feeling uh, depressed and uh, in like this grieving state um there is a lot of um anger also um and um unclarity but at the same time there is clarity but regarding theater and what we're doing um we actually like maximized our workload and not workload but like our energies and what we're doing and i i think um it's a way also to to deal with the, the huge uh, shock and the traumas like everything everyone is kind of like uh is projecting their traumas and looking at it and and seeing how we are living in this continuous um violence every day like planes are like we're in theater and there's like planes going uh in like jets flying going to gaza and we know that they're gonna go bomb now and the the sounds that they make uh it's insane uh, every day there is um, an invasion uh, we wake up to uh, news of little kids being shot uh yesterday was uh janine and uh, they had a premiere happened yesterday and it's a direct effect um our workshops with our students uh, like the weekly workshops we have um sometimes there are students that can't make it because there is something on the road and uh so it's it's affecting everyone um uh, but it's not stopping us at all like we're we're finding ourselves like 
kind of more motivated to do more and and uh, really create as kind of like an anti power to all this uh, hate and ugliness that we're seeing every day. If yeah. I may add one, if I, if I may add one more sentence to what Emil was saying, I would say also that uh, it is more uh, a necessity now uh, to do uh, culture and theater in particular because it is the the tool that keeps us uh, in, connected to our uh, psychological uh, and and uh, psychology and and to our uh, sanity and to our humanity because uh, what is happening with would only uh, put the people off their balance and so theater has has such um, a magical um, input in uh, giving a little bit of uh, of balance uh, either to the young people or to uh, uh, the youth that we are working with and and so this is why um, we continue like uh, bulldozer uh, like bulldozers really to uh, to be able to uh, uh, to keep this this possibility uh, on the ground yeah and for those of us who are um, listening in or just joining us Ashtar Theater is the oldest youth theater in the West Bank. Um, there's a youth theater. Um, they also do theater of the oppressed work and they have a professional adult company. So just to, um, you know, to provide a little bit of context for folks who might be listening in for the first time. Um, I do want to ask, you know, how have, um, you know, how, can you talk a little bit about the, um, the youth theater and the youth theater training that you do? I know that you just started a, um, a psychosocial program and you've been um, building that. Um, can you tell us a bit more about about that and how that how that's going along? Yeah. Um, we've been always doing uh, psychosocial programs um, uh, when the Gaza monologues were created. That was a product also of um, a psychosocial intervention in Gaza. And um, sadly, every time there is something like this happens, um, we find, like this time we find ourselves like, this is what we need to do. And uh, we started with um, schools, uh, with the uh, uh, school uh, students uh, from uh, the age of um, seven to the age of 15. Uh, we having uh, groups uh, that are, rehearsing um, at Ashtar. Uh, we have two groups, um, young ones, uh, also the same age group. And there is the adult uh, group uh, I have uh, this year, around like 12, uh, young guy and girl, um, between the ages of eight, uh, of like 21 to 35. And um, we're also working with the youth groups and youth organizations. Um, uh, we are working in Bethlehem also, um, in schools and with youth organizations. And um, it's been uh, going the past uh, few months. It's been very uh, rewarding. And, and um, it's kind of like an active doing uh, because we felt like very helpless and like, what can we really do? But uh, this work uh, with the trainers uh, that are working on it, uh, it created like this small community that we ha we got to meet during uh, the darkest times and ventilate and uh, be like a sp space, uh, a safe space for each other. And that was really powerful. And uh, the work with kids and um, and people, even um, like adults, because uh, we have like women groups also. Um, it's it's very rewarding because you see how people are affected and how much they are in need to talk, to sit and, and just share what they've been seeing on TV or how is this affecting them personally. There's a lot of um, like amount of um, despair, but also there is hope and um, people are dabbling with this new reality, with their fears, um, and, and and little kids were, were noticing a lot of um, 
stress they have uh, they're not able to focus uh, even during the the workshops it's like taking a lot of uh, effort uh, to get them into um, a safe uh, mindset um, but the, but it just only shows that the work is needed hmm? so I'm, I'm really, I'm really also... happy that this is happening Sorry, me. Maybe uh, mm -hmm. I'm just. <laughs> uh, no, sure. I also want to add, uh, the part of uh, of uh, the, the work in Gaza because, uh, as uh, mm -hmm. the audience might uh, or might not know, that uh, we have a branch in Gaza and we have our uh, youth who work there as well, uh, together with Ali Yassin and uh, the director and those who uh, really written the Gaza monologues because they were our mm -hmm. students continued to be our students and and then they became uh, trainers and and theater makers in Gaza uh, working with Ashtar so it, although they have um, lost their homes their loved ones and their uh, safety net and everything um, you can imagine and they are living in tents or living in like however yeah. the Gazans are living um, we they were able to uh, practice uh, or to guide um, training with children uh, in the camps, in the um, the new um, presence of of, uh, of the Gazans that moved from one place to another. Yeah. So we did uh, we we did a program with them where they were able to uh, also do the um, psychosocial intervention um, with these kids, and and it was really yeah. amazing because that that had helped them also as um, grown ups and as. Uh, um, adults to uh, ventilate because there's so much frustration so much uh, fear and fury that there is all getting together mm. where people are unable to understand or to even uh, expect what tomorrow would bring you know or n the next minute would bring and so um, that's why to to really work with the with the kids was uh, quite a ventilation of both ends. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and besides that, uh, Ali uh, Abiyasin um, had been uh, writing marvelous uh, monologues and, and like keeping his diary uh, from uh, the, the beginning of, uh, of the war until now, but also others were trying to, uh, um, to do the same. Uh, some of them made films, some of them uh, uh, had written uh, poetry or, mm. uh, or, I mean, they tried also to, um, to feel their human um, like backbone, if you want, because the, without that, uh, they, they also, like, the, everything is deteriorating uh, their uh, mm. human presence. So yeah, uh, and and maybe theater again. Theater uh, is the only thing that is uh, uh, safeguarding them from a co complete collapse. Yeah. No, I um. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. I think there's a lot of you know there's there can be apathy sometimes where people are like, well, what can theater do? Like why, why theater? You know, there's so many uh, terrible things happening in the world. Why should we support theater? What can theater do? How can, you know, um, does this actually matter? And I, I think this is speaking to, you know, you're, you're speaking to um, exactly why theater matters and what, you know, the potential of the work is and what theater can do. Um, I'm just, I'm wondering if you could tell us a bit about um, the Gaza monologues. I know that um, I, it, our audience will probably know about the recent initiative, the international initiative where, where there hundreds, hundreds of productions were done around the world um, in March and in April and productions are still continuing to happen as part of an international solidarity effort uh, to produce and to share stories from people in Gaza. Um, you know, we did, there were several productions in New York and we were proud to be part of that. Um, but could mm. you tell us a little bit about that initiative and, um, you know, how that initiative is continuing and, um, any additions to the Gaza monologues, um, 
in 2024 because this was this piece was written you know a decade ago um and is still still relevant so we'd love to hear love to hear your um experience of that yes well uh, i would start by saying that uh, as emil mentioned the uh, um, a few minutes ago that uh, this particular um, project was done in order to give a, a platform for the young people to uh, ventilate and to talk about the, the psychological effect of the first uh, assault on, on Gaza in 2008-2009 for 22 days. And, and we wanted uh, our students at that time to really uh, be able to uh, write their um, uh, testimonies of, of what they have seen, what they have lived, what they have experienced in order to overcome the trauma that they, uh, they have lived. We never thought that th this ongoing trauma is going to be not a trauma, but, but uh, like a multiple traumas that they are uh, living uh, these days. So when um, when the war erupted uh, in October, we thought that, like, come on, we, we don't know what to do. Uh, uh, I mean, we were all uh, paralyzed. But then we thought that the only way, at least, to really convey the message to the world is by telling them that this is not something that is happening <laughs> in October. No. This, this mm. has been done every two years. Um, like in in two thousand eight nine in in two thousand and uh, and twelve there was a major assault in two thousand fourteen uh, there was another in two thousand sixteen uh, at the fourth one and it, we lost our theater El Hal uh, in two thousand and uh, uh, and uh, eighteen and and so it's an ongoing ongoing every two years every two years there is a big major assault on Gaza that uh, uh, without even a trigger so this is exactly why we thought we thought that okay let the people at least realize understand um, be aware and so by by disseminating or by sharing these uh, uh, stories the the world who had like um, who had agreed to present them, uh, felt that uh, it's true. Like something, something is wrong here. Uh, the, the I, I'm sure that also the media, um, the mass media, is not putting uh, out front what is happening in in Palestine. But but uh, this is the role also of of culture and of theaters and of uh, um, artists to present the the reality the daily uh, aspects um, and so um so yeah that was our main uh, main objective of why we have uh, shared these monologues and from there i mean it grew and it, it was it became like a snowball that uh, maybe uh, emil could uh, continue uh, further because it became really something that that is like a like a wave if you want mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a wave, and um, it's continuing um, this year. Um, of course, um, it's 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 running on its own, and that's what's like really strong ab about it is the ownership that people are taking, and uh, there is a huge. I'm feeling there's a huge amount of responsibility over these testimonies at people that are. Uh, utilizing and uh, in creatively and uh, in, a very, in, in a lot of inspirational ways. Uh, um, in South Africa, there are people who protested using the Gaza monologues. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, were using it to speak about the land and indigenous people and uh, in, in the US and in, in Arab countries and Europe and people were reading them in their classrooms and, and making stage readings and uh, fundraising events. Uh, and uh, for this year, this is continuing. And um, it is um, our call to, to you that uh, please take the, the monologues and uh, you can organize. It's like one of the questions about how can we what what can we do and and uh, 
these uh, like building like it's building communities with people and it's really sharing and and uh, getting to know and educating ourselves and reminding ourselves with with what's happening and uh, there are new monologues that's been written as Iman mentioned like Ali Abu Yasin has been writing and uh, a lot of letters and uh, we're sharing all the new material like testimonies from the same authors but now uh, all like in audio and in writing and on on the Gaza Monologues website and there are projects now about publishing uh, the monologues uh, and um, and it's it's going so yeah it's been, it's been to 22 uh, different languages around the world uh, mm. languages that we never heard of as well but uh, <laughs> that is on on one side this is really good uh, that uh, the message is being uh, reaching out to um, communities and to uh, countries um, with their own language and that that uh, that was always uh, the idea that the, the people would hear these uh, testimonies with their own um, language and not uh, through a foreign language um, but also what we're trying to do at, at the moment is also invite international the international community that had been part of the Gaza monologues to write letters back to Gaza, uh, which is uh, also an important aspect for us because uh, we believe that it, it is important that the, the world um, is hearing Gaza, but it is also important for Gaza to hear the world. Uh, and and we're not only uh, gathering these letters for today and tomorrow. We're gathering it for for history, for um, because hopefully soon the genocide would stop. But but then later, uh, I mean the next generation or the people who had lost everything. Um, I mean, they need to know that the people were with them on their side, or uh, that they think that that wasn't uh, accepted at all. So uh, these letters are very important for us. And, and uh, we um, launched this uh, um, this call, uh, there's like two, three months ago, but, uh, but it's open because we thought that uh, people are still very interested and they, they are sending uh, letters to us. So we kept postponing it. <laughs> Uh, uh, postponing the deadline and, and I think we don't need a deadline for it because uh, until uh, this genocide and war is, is over then uh, people can really uh, communicate and uh, and send uh, letters, poems um, visual material doesn't really matter And but uh, yeah this is like a, also an invitation for uh, whoever is hearing us and can folks access um, information on how to send letters and where to send letters through the Ashtar website? Uh, yeah. They can go to our Instagram. Okay. They can go to our Instagram. There's the link tree. And there uh, you'll find different um, links to the Gaza monologues, the letters, the psychosocial intervention, like different parts. Fantastic. I know folks have, um, you know, there's a lot of interest in uh how to support the work and in producing the work, um, you know, the, again, I've been part of so many, um, a couple of Gaza monologues initiatives here in New York and uh, the community that it's built. Um, I talk to folks from that every day, like there's a really, um, a very strong uh, Palestinian activist artist community that has, um, that's become very tight and has worked together and, um, you know, we've seen all kinds of manifestations of the monologues. We've seen dance, interpretive dance. We've seen it, um, as Emil says, used um, in protests. We've seen them done in the encampments. In the um, recently mm. on campus, oh. people were reading um, Gaza monologues in the in the um, in the encampments and having discussions about Palestinian theater and Palestinian culture. So, um, you know, this oh. is very it's a, a important document and important to. Um, Iman's point, a piece of a, a piece of the archive of this moment in history. I see we have a question in the chat, and I just want to, um, as we're getting, we're halfway through our conversation, um, 
And for folks who just might be tuning in um, via the live stream or, um, or Zoom, uh, we're speaking today with uh, Ashtar Theater's Iman Aoun and um, Emil Saba. And um, we're welcoming everyone to participate in the chat. You can um, put your questions in the chat. Um, you know, and uh, we welcome we welcome an open conversation. So please do join us. I see that we have a chat from, or we have a question from Marina. Um, Marina says, we're doing another Gaza Monologues presentation as a fundraiser this Sunday with Palestinian American kids and three kids who just came from Gaza. Uh, the kids said they want Gaza kids to know that they care. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it is. I, Marina, I thank see you that. so much. This is... Yeah, thank you, Marina. Um, I see that on campus. Like I've um, been teaching at several colleges throughout New York. And, you know, the general feeling is we want, how do we let them know? How do we let people in Palestine know that we care and we're behind them? Um, we want them to know that there's solidarity. You know, can you uh, take pictures? Can you share? Um, we want them to know that we're here. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, there's a real, there's a real movement and real, um, you know, deep, deep caring from, um, from the, the students and, um, th that doesn't get spoken about in the media and that doesn't get spoken about, you know, mm. you, you won't, you won't see that, but that it's there. And, um, you know, Gaza monologues and a lot of Palestinian theater has been, um, an integral part of that. Um, yeah. Again, our chat is open. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to um, ask another question for either of you about um, just about the Palestinian theater landscape in general, about funding and um, the importance of creating. And if we could speak a little bit about the importance of creating an independent Palestinian theater uh, that doesn't rely on um, on government, international government support. Um, if you want to speak a little bit more about that, and I know um, Ashtar uh, has been working on that. Um, why why is this important? And what is the situation, first of all, with funding Palestinian theater? And um, why is it important to be independent? Um, I, I want to say that uh, it is morally uh, obligatory that we do not really uh, side by uh, the countries that uh, are complicit in this genocide. So um, we refuse to really um, uh, go into the uh, the chain of uh, or uh, into this um, vicious circle of uh, how uh, the um, the grants and how the funding agencies and spe specifically the funding agencies that are connected to uh, governments, uh, um, white washing governments, where they kept the, uh, the Palestinian cause in a coma for so many years. And we were all part of this um, coma that we, we kept on uh, going, uh, thinking that we're doing development, thinking that we're doing change, thinking that we're doing uh, an, a, a real intervention to, uh, to, to make um, a better reality on the ground. Um, that was, all, all, of course, our intention. Uh, as Palestinians or as Palestinian groups and uh, theater makers and and uh, civil society, but uh, but the money that came in was not with that intention. The money that came was more with uh, keeping the status quo of uh, of the occupation and making the situation like um, mm, good here and better, a little better there and and worse there and and. And so uh, we don't want this anymore. And and uh, what happened, uh, what is happening in Gaza uh, these days, had really like uh, um, flipped the, the the table, if you want. And and so uh, everything is clear and um, in front of uh, of all of us. And and therefore, um, 
as a network, uh, as the Palestinian Performing Arts Network, and as uh, uh, groups uh, apart from the uh, uh, PAN, uh, we had taken uh, a decision that uh, we want to be completely independent of that kind of uh, uh, of support, and we want uh, to to be more dependent or on our self. Um, and uh, on our friends, uh, and we are happy to receive, of course, uh, support from uh, from around the world. But but from uh, friend friends money, if you want, or friendship money, and not uh, from complicit money. Um, so uh, therefore, we are trying also to uh, find ways of uh, uh, looking into uh, projects that can be uh, self-sustained. Or uh, we are. That's why I'm here in in, in France as well, uh, because uh, we started to um, to look at our products. Uh, not only as an awareness uh, aspect, but also awareness plus plus, if you want, <laughs> like plus. Okay, why not uh, the the audience uh, and and the uh, um, the friends of uh, uh, of the Palestinians and of Ashtar to support uh, our organization? So uh, this is what what is needed at the moment. This is why. Uh, we need to travel more uh, in order to raise more uh, support to our work back home because we cannot really be all outside or we cannot all stay in either. So that's one major. Oh, it seems she that, froze. oh, <laughs> Iman, it seems you have um, froze. Um... But Emil, did you want to add anything while yeah. we wait for Iman for sure. to come let's, back? Yeah, um, let's Iman, um, just for our folks at home, um, Iman, as uh, she mentioned, is on tour and is currently coming from um, coming to us from France. So um, she's had a precarious Wi-Fi. So she will be she'll be back with us, um, and Emil, Emil will, will we will continue. That's right. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, what what Iman is talking about. Um, is a very, um, it's been like our um, talk and discussion and work uh, within the pal Palestinian theaters, cultural organizations. Um, we're part of the um, art networks, as she, as Iman mentioned, PAN is one of them, Palestinian Art Network. And um, everyone who is actively on the ground and, and working with the Palestinian community, uh, we were really, um, like all the organizations that we were working with, uh, and they are representing their um, respected countries or yeah, yeah, their countries, uh, they have not defended us. They have not said any good word about the Palestinians. And it made me personally realize that uh, all these all these years, um, uh, th this kind of system has conditioned, uh, the Palestinian organizations and NGOs, especially theaters and cultural organizations, to really be a part of this complicit uh, cycle of uh, like all the projects, all the programs were about improving society and freedom of speech and women empowerment and mm -hmm. it also like the topics you want to talk about, even though you don't see it in your society and you'd be like, but X is urgent now, but the funding or the theme of the project is something else. But and and they ask and they ask the theaters to collect uh, like uh, the number of audiences and females and, and 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 males and gender and do all these paperwork that really drowns us and and transforms you into a machine uh, for I don't know what is the use of this. But in the back of our heads, we think, okay, maybe this da this data will prove to the West that we are civilized enough, that we are human enough, that we, yes, we care about these topics and we are addressing them and we're trying to change it. And our audience is uh, uh, aware of this, but sadly, uh, everything is like gone with the wind. And... Um, and it and and we each time, especially Ashtar, finds itself after a few years that, oops, what can we do? How can we 
keep going? How can we even uh, improve our programs uh, in the way that we want it to be, to invest in the people we work with and to really create sustainable, um, which is hard, I know, like a theater work in anywhere. It's, it's really hard, but now we're kind of like, okay, and we have to really uh, work in how to sustain ourselves and create these opportunities for ourselves, whether it's workshops, uh, programs, um, psychosocial, and, um, and other things, but away from this conditional, implicit uh, funding. Yeah. Yeah. In a nutshell. Sure. Iman, yeah, Iman yeah. is back with us. <laughs> yes, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are okay. happy to see yeah, you. It, there was a, yeah, it's something cut. I don't know why, but uh, it's okay. Um, no, I, I wanted also to say that uh, uh, there are many, um, many groups around the world at the moment uh, that are trying to really, uh, like, uh, organize some sort of um, uh, of support system for Palestinian culture. So, um, I mean, it, it's good to be aware that um, people are becoming more and more uh, aware of this problem and, and um, able to really find new ways to, uh, to support, especially uh, art and culture in Palestine because they really understand that that through art and through culture uh, change could could be uh, met because uh, human rights had fallen completely and we have heard the sound of the crash mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and also uh, like uh, all these uh, like big bombastic um, ideas that uh, Emil was talking about I mean it, it's a folly it's it's false it's false and uh, yeah and so we don't believe any anymore and even when we say you end we start to laugh oh yeah I mean I think you know we were kind of saying it earlier um I we don't come back from what we've witnessed, what has been, what is happening, the genocide in Gaza. There's no, you know, th there's no returning to a before. There's no coming back from that. Um, you know, it's, it, it really feels like at least, you know, even here in the U.S. that we're, we're living in a different world, that we're living in a different moment. And um, if you're not on board, if you're not talking about Palestine, I mean, if you can't, this is to the, you know, to, Emil, some of your point and, um, you know, very much like the, the New York theater that, you know, espouses equity and diversity and, um, you know, community and all of the buzzwords, but, but still to this day cannot say Palestine. Um, you know, we see that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, it's, it's out there now. And um, yeah. it's not, we don't, we, we don't forget that. Um, there is no coming back. And um you know, I mean, your this work that you're talking about, like this is, this is the future. And um, and speaking of future, um, and I just want to remind uh, folks is where we have um, we're in our last 15 minutes of our uh, conversation for folks who might be listening at home and for folks who are on the Zoom. Um, if you would like to uh, ask a question in the in the chat or um, you know, a voice an opinion or. Um, anything you'd like, put it, you can feel free to uh, put it in the chat and um, I will, we will read and, um, you know, discuss that. But, um, you know, speaking of the future, what is, um, what are your future goals for Ashtar? I know that um, you have an amazing youth theater program. You're doing collaborations, youth theater collaborations with groups um, in Europe, um, throughout Europe, throughout the throughout the world, but I see um, there's some work coming up right now in um, the UK and in uh, Ireland. Um, so, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about that, and, and then also just the future work, like what you're looking forward to in the next um, months or years? Man, do you want to say? Do you want to go on? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. 
we can start with oranges and stones that's why um but um um yeah we're um we're having we're going into rehearsals now um uh, this monday with a new production uh with a group of our uh graduates and um, young actors um we're gonna produce a new play called Guernica Gaza uh visions from the center of the earth and it's uh, written by Naomi Wallace and Ismail Khalidi yeah it's been uh, really a great uh, pleasure working with them uh, in the past uh, few months and um uh we were we are very excited to start uh, to start this we're going uh with this it's gonna premiere in july in ramallah hopefully and uh we're invited to go to a festival uh with the uh, mandala theater in oxford it's called uncaging our world the youth festival love them they're doing amazing work mm. yeah, love them yeah they are and um so we're we're going there, and uh, two of our uh, also um, colleagues from Gaza, Tamer and Mahmoud, are coming. Uh, we're doing our best to get them out. Tamer is um, um, stuck in Rafah border. He's there for maybe two weeks now, and um, we're trying to get him out. Also, there is Amjad. Uh, um, all, these are um, three of the authors of Ga the Gaza monologues, and there's Mahmoud in Egypt, and uh, hopefully they can be with us um, in July in the UK. And uh, we're we're having also a new production with our uh, students, with the young ones, um, coming in also June, and uh, so the ne next uh, and the rest of the year we're uh, doing. Um, theater workshops in Jericho and the Jordan Valley. Uh, we're going to have also like um, a camp, a theater camp for 20 days in August uh, with the circus, with the Palestinian circus. We're doing this joint uh, project and uh, we're going to do workshops, uh, circus and theater workshops. And uh, then we'll come up with like two productions that uh, this group can tour with and perform to the rest of the year so um, yeah this is what's happening now and the men can add uh, of course uh, stuff that I forgot yeah. um, maybe before I uh, I add someone is asking about the name of the festival uh, in Oxford maybe Emil you could uh, say it one more time the one of Mandala Theater or yes. run by Mandala Theater, yes, I mean, and, uh, and, our, our friend. And, yeah, so, um, yes, I I would, yes, Uncaging Our World is, is the name of. Uh, of right. So, um, apart from uh, what Emil uh, was saying, um, we are touring with uh, uh, two plays um, at the moment. Uh, one is the Oranges and Stones that talks about uh, the loss of uh, Palestine since uh, the Balfour Declaration. Till today, in no words, um, we try to tell the whole history without uh, any, any word at all um, in order to really reach out to every, and sing every single person um, um, because Sometimes language can be a barrier, but uh, we don't want any barriers between us and, and the audience. And and so through these through these performances, we are also uh, creating um, a dialogue afterwards uh, with the audience, uh, where they are um, able to ask more questions and and get more aware of uh, what is ha happening. Um, and uh, and so the tour started in in Jordan, uh, then in uh, in Portugal, and and now we're France, and then we're we will be in uh, UK, um, in in London, Liverpool, and Newcastle, and then South Africa, and uh, and hopefully uh, we will uh, uh, bring it to Sri Lanka uh, in in November, um, to Italy, and uh, this is also must be to the US. <laughs> yeah. 
it, yeah. it, it, yes, I, I think it is time to to bring it over to uh, to the U.S., to the universities, and to to different places. Uh, we played it uh, um, some years ago in uh, the lab uh, in uh, George Washington University. Yeah, um, we have. It is uh, time, yeah, it is time to be at the uh, uh, Golden Thread uh, Theater, maybe. <laughs> And other places as well. But um, so um, the other uh, play is also uh, multiple uh, uh, like circus, dance, and theater uh, directed by uh, Emil and, uh, and played by Ashtar Ma'alem. Uh, today um, she flew to, um, uh, to Morocco to, to perform it. And Morocco. that play. To Morocco, to Marrakesh, yes. So that play talks about uh, also um, being a Palestinian living in France and and what kind of um, like uh, identity um, questions uh, or crises are raised. So um, so this is uh, this is what is touring at the moment and uh, and the uh, play with the youth had been. Uh, this is also an important uh, play uh, written during the uh, uh, genocidal uh, um, war by our friend uh, Ruwanti de Shakira from Sri Lanka about the loss of Palestine for children. It's a, a play, a really amazing uh, short story that that uh, that can be uh, told, uh, and and it is also uh, written and published in a book. Uh, and uh, so um, Nursan and Emil turned it into um, like a play with the, with the students. Um, and uh, this is part of also the this kind of solidarity and, and networking with, uh, with uh, different countries and different people around the world in, um, as, a, as an answer to what is happening. Thank you. And um, so for all of our folks who are listening from the U.S., um, you know, you're available to tour the U.S. And I, um, the, correct, right? We'll, we'll have to get you here. We will, um, you know, have to work on that and getting, um, you know, getting you yeah. throughout the, um, getting you on the East Coast, the West Coast and throughout the U.S. because it's, um, you know, very obvious and like hearing you talk, it's like, oh, the U.S. is missing from this and the U.S. Uh, mm. needs this. Um, I'm seeing um, some comments in the, um, I'm seeing some questions and comments in the chat box and I'm going to um, read um, from Sahar. Um, Iman and Emil, your resilience is so inspiring. Thank you for the work you're doing for our world. How do you do it? <laughs> How do you do it? Um, the question. It is a good question. Yeah. Listen, my name is Iman. Iman means faith. That is that I have strong faith in theater. That is my drive. For me, uh, the only faith that I have, if you want, is the faith of, uh, of the power of the people. Because uh, it is, um, it's important to be really um, strong, bold, and um, and to be clear-minded. You you have to always be in the shoes of the oppressed, even if you are not, in order to make a change. So that's the that's the drive. This is. This is our motto. Um, we, I mean, we always uh, look for um, for being uh, like a, a tool for change at Ashtar. Yeah, I think like for me, because um, it's been really, really hard, and um, like since October. Um, I felt really, and I still feel, feel really depressed. And there's like days that I don't want to do anything. And I'm like digging for the motivation and 
the reason to do to do what I'm doing and then I see everyone doing the same thing here but I don't feel that we have the luxury even to give up or to stop like I can't afford it because everything is lurking behind the hills so there's a sense of time that is very heightened like if it's not now when it's gonna be and um, sometimes I think maybe maybe what we're doing can really make a difference and when i see people coming to the to the theater and uh, the students and and artists and and the community and i feel like yeah we're important it's uh, really essential to be there to be here and um, to have like the doors open all the time and and um, once i step into like the theater on, on the stage uh, and um, it's like takes you to a different place. I feel like um, I'm, I'm I'm really lucky to be in this um, place now within what's happening. It's really a safeguard, and somehow it allows us to think and um, to explore options. But definitely, it's like we can't afford giving up. It's just as it is. Mm. Yeah. We have a lot of um, we have questions and uh, or more comments and support in the chat. Um, folks are saying thank you, theater friends, and uh, speaking about how it does make a difference and the arts do make a difference. And you know, you're you're showing us that every day. Um, I'm going to read um, a comment from uh, Leila Buck. Um, is a dear dear friend of Ashtar here in uh, New York um, and Leila. part of the community. Uh, thank you, Imani, Emil, and Ashtar for all you do and all you are. I feel so privileged and grateful for the time I got to spend with you. Uh, for the time I got to spend with you there and to witness the experience of your work then and now. Your commitment to the intersection of provocative, powerful, independent, professional work to training, connecting, empowering, and supporting youth and young actors across Palestine and engaging with communities throughout the West Bank, Gaza, and beyond are so inspiring. Thank you for all you do, for all you are. We will continue to spread the word about your work here wherever you can. And yes, to bring you back to the U.S. inshallah. I feel like this is, thank you, Layla, and um, I feel like this thank is the place to end this today, um, you know, in this space of um, of the future, thinking about the future and um, the inspiring, uh, life-changing work that the arts do, that theater does it, and that you do, um, you know, not only in Palestine, not only in the local community, but how it's, re it, like the, how it's affecting everyone across the world. And we're, we're grateful to be in community with you and we're grateful for the work that you do it is um it is the greatest honor to be here today to be uh speaking with you and to um to be um to have asked to you know host and to moderate this it really truly is um i want to just um as we're ending now of course um major thank you to iman and emil uh to howlround for hosting the program um, and to Golden Thread for creating this yes. um, this important series. Um, they're going to be continuing with this series with conversations um, in the next few weeks with Alhara and the Freedom Theater. And for more information, you can tune into goldenthread.org. You can see the schedule. Um, you can join their email list as well. Um, please join um, Friends of Ashtar if you're in New York um, or if you're in the US. Um, we're now Friends of Ashtar USA. Um, hey. <laughs> yes, um, join the <laughs> Friends of Ashtar. You can connect on um, Instagram. Um, thank you to Wendy Reyes for our live stream, for being our technician and the rest of Golden Threads team, Sahar, Michelle, Sheila, Linda, uh, Sulna, Thank you to our audiences for joining us. And, um, you know, thank you. Please stay in the loop. Um, please join the email list. Uh, join the Ashtar email list, um, Friends of Ashtar, and um, be part of the global community. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. <laughs>